Good morning. All right, it's great to see everybody. I really want to thank everybody for coming in today. It's really great to start another year of changing lives in Middlesex Community College. So I just want to acknowledge we have a couple of our dedicated trustees here today, uh, Chairman Jim Campbell and Trustee uh, Dr. Cheryl Howard. Thank you so much for coming. I hope all of you had a really wonderful summer. Uh, my wife and I uh, made a couple of road trips this summer, nothing too far. Uh, we really focused on visiting family and friends this weekend. As many of you know, uh, we have a new uh, first granddaughter, which was uh, great to go visit her. She's down in Virginia, and uh, we've uh, been down there several times this summer, and uh, we'll be going back again for, uh, I get a weekend, my wife gets a little more time than that, but uh, it's all good. We also uh, connected with some old friends of ours in upstate New York uh, a couple weekends ago, and that was just a real treat to uh, see people that you know we've known for 50 years. Um, I was at these folks' wedding 45 years ago, and I'm going, I was only 12 then, so it, it was really uh, great to catch up uh, with them. So I hope you had a great summer. I also got in uh, lots of uh, swimming. I hope Rob got in some uh, swimming out there. We're, we're, we're pond swimming aficionados out there. And uh, uh, some really good long bike rides, uh, lots of running, and really ready for a positive year here at MCC. I want to... Uh, take a moment at this time to thank our frontline staff, uh, the professional staff in student services, uh, enrollment, advising, disability services, student accounts, financial aid, and all those who have been working so hard over the summer to get our students ready for success. Um, they're working today to work their last minute magic to get the classes as, uh, and students as ready as possible. This fall, We'll recognize this group of dedicated professionals with a special professional day for them. We'll do this on a Friday before a long weekend. We'll have some presentations, a nice dialogue, a good lunch, and let them out a bit early that day. So we did the same thing last year, and it really was received well. So let's get started for today. Um, Right. At the beginning, I'm going to start out with some updates and some introductions before getting into the more substantive parts of my presentation today. Okay, so it has been a very busy summer on both campuses. Uh, we've really been doing everything from Brian Wright repairing sinkholes, right? Never know when one of those is going to show up in your front parking lot, uh, to rebuilding the parking lots and sidewalks in Bedford. There has not been a dull moment this whole summer. Uh, we've continued to upgrade our student spaces and now have a new student lounge in the Cowan Center, 213A. That's going to be open up. Uh, it looks great and it'll even look better when the new furniture comes in shortly. Uh, we have closed down the student lounge on Middle Street we built some smaller spaces in the buildings we own so we don't have that rental space anymore and also the uh, food pantry has been moved into Cowan 13 uh, 213 as well uh, classrooms have been renovated we're continuing that project of updating camp uh, classrooms on both campuses uh, we did some of the science labs in Talbot and Henderson they got spiffed up and there are new stools on the way uh, the graphic design studio in North Am Academic was improved. Four nursing classrooms in Derby were upgraded. Uh, we installed more sound bars in classrooms. We're trying out some new teacher stations. So lots getting done there. Uh, we also upgraded a lot of our IT systems over the summer and more of that's coming. 
We have a new and greatly improved mobile app. You really should download that and take a look at it. Really expanded capabilities that will really help our students stay connected and also a lot that faculty and staff can do on that as well. We have a new and improved room scheduling software that's up and running and we spent a fair amount of time or let's say IT spent a uh, fair amount of time really looking at our cybersecurity defenses and really did some major testing of our network. So we're very conscious of the threats that are out there and really trying to do as much as possible to keep the college IT infrastructure safe. We also upgraded printing uh, capabilities on the libraries. That's going to be uh, a great uh, new thing for our students there. And we have two new shuttle buses that will be doing expa an expanded schedule so we better connect our two campuses. So I'd like to give a big thanks to facilities, IT, and the refresh committee led by Ded Bakker and Judy Hogan, along with Colleen Cox and Christina Kelly. Thank you to those folks for all you did. So another major milestone this summer was submitting the five-year NECHI report. This is another outstanding effort by our provost, Phil Sisson. Uh, he led a great team with Mary Ann Dean, Kathy McCarran, Shirley Salamone, Susan Anderson, and Beth Noel all played significant roles in documenting the great things that are happening here at the college and all the progress we have made in the five years since our 10-year report. I have no doubt that this report will be held up as a model for others to emulate. So I want to thank that group very much for all they did. Thank you. So we also continue to get some grants, don't we, Susan? Right? Knocking them off. $250,000 workforce success grant from the Commonwealth Corporation for our medical assisting program. Uh, $250,000 skills capital grant for our dental labs. This brings a total of over a million dollars that we've brought in. Uh, we get a $600,000 early college Smith family grant that we'll be working on with Project Learn and Lowell High School. $100,000 for an inclusive concurrent enrollment program and $600,000 for the Early Childhood Education Training and Support Program. So we've been uh, doing a lot of work. The uh, department uh, that Susan leads, Institutional Effectiveness, has really been bringing in a lot of grants for us. We're also beginning a new pl uh, strategic planning cycle, and I appointed uh, a committee with several members from the old committee and with uh, a whole group of positive progressive folks that will help uh, build a new strategic plan over the next year. Susan Anderson and Hallie Sugarman will be uh, co-chairing this and they'll be telling you about this in just a little while. So also the President's Cabinet has been working throughout the summer and we have put together a list of priorities for the coming year and we worked on those during a retreat we had in August and I'll talk more about those later in the presentation. We did have some radical changes to our student onboarding, uh, new student onboarding this year. Uh, it's really the goal of this from the beginning is to get our students connected, but also work with them so that they have an end goal in mind. We've done a lot of work with pathways. This is another part of this. How do we get the students on that pathway to success as early as possible? This is critical to their success and we've done a tremendous amount. This year we um, utilized a comprehensive online orientation that was funded uh, through our grant program. So this has already engaged over 1,300 students and is really helping the students to start off with uh, a source where they can find out a tremendous amount of information. But this was augmented by our accelerated and intensive FYE classes that provide students uh, the information they need to have before the start of the semester. We've gotten very positive feedback from this. 
that was very engaging, and I think uh, we'll keep assessing this and improving it as we go along. There was also an array of face-to-face -face events over the Welcome and Engagement Week with special orientations for particular populations, including first-generation Latinx and Asian students. So a lot going on during the summer. So I spent a fair amount of time at the state capitol uh, this spring and summer. And uh, this is really part of the advocacy work that I do for the 15 community colleges in Massachusetts. Um, so a lot of those things we're looking at are things that will help you help our students. So our budget strategy this year was really looking at what can we do uh, in an environment where most of the air and most of the funding is being taken up by the restructuring of the K through 12 funding system this year. So that was really what was uh, taking a lot of the time. That's what really held up the budget throughout most of the summer and something the legislature still needs to solve uh, this fall. So we kept our asks uh, reasonable and I'm proud to say that everything we asked for we did receive this year. Uh, throughout the spring and summer and into uh, uh, currently I've had meetings with Senate President Karen Spilka, House Speaker Robert DeLeo, Joint Higher Ed Chairs Senator Ann Gobi and Representative Jeff Roy, Joint Higher Ed members Sean uh, Garbley from Arlington, Jim Arcero from Westford, and uh, I also had a very interesting meeting with uh, Vice Chair of Higher Ed, Senator Joe Comerford from Greenfield. She's a new senator um, who uh, sponsored in her first term uh, a bill called the Cherish Act, which was dedicated to providing significantly more funding for public higher ed, trying to return us to the levels of funding we had in 2001 with inflation taken into account. So they were talking about providing um, more than $500 million more for that. So there's been quite a bit of talk on that at Capitol Hill, and we're hoping that more of that takes place in the fall. It's something we've been talking with MCCC at the state level on, and we're looking for ways that we can work together to advocate together to be a more powerful advocating block in the state house. One of the things we're concerned about, and I had a discussion uh, last uh, week with Joe Nardoni about, is one of the critical problems is the money's always split on a 50-25-25 formula. That means the five UMass schools get 50% of the funding, the nine universities get 25%, and the 15 community colleges who serve the majority of the students in this state get 25%. So even if we get more money and it's still split on that same formula, it's very difficult for us to catch up or get the funding we need to address uh, the needs of our faculty, staff, and students. So that's something we're going to be working on this year. I had another very interesting meeting with the Black and Latino Caucus at the State House. This is the first time that the college presidents have sat down with them. We pointed out to them that the 15 community colleges serve more minority students than the rest of public higher education altogether. And we believe that we have a lot of common and overlapping interests with this group of legislators. I testified also at a higher ed committee hearing. Uh, this was on legislation that would provide in-state tuition rates for all students who graduated from Massachusetts community colleges, regardless of their status or documentation. And next week, I'll be testifying with uh, Dean of Students uh, Pam Flaherty uh, on a bill sponsored by Representative Jim Marcero from Westford to provide training resources for those who serve veterans. So very active time. Uh, advocating for our needs in the Capitol. We also received a $100,000 earmark, earmark from Lowell Senator Ed Kennedy for a study for a STEM building. We're going to be combining that 
with our application for significant capital funding from the state. We're hoping to build out some of our facilities on Middle Street and really create a STEM innovation center on that street. So that's something that uh, both uh, Frank Nocell and I have been working on significantly this summer. One of the things I'm really looking forward to this year is we've uh, put together a student advocacy day uh, in October down at the State House. And I think this is really going to be a lot of fun. Uh, each of the 15 community colleges will send a busload of students who will meet with their local legislators. And uh, we really have that belief that empowering our students to tell their stories will raise our profile in the state capitol. So we're really looking forward to our students going down and telling their stories. It's not, uh, it's very different from when they listen to a president or when they listen to the union, but when they listen to the students that are coming from their districts, this sends a very powerful message. First time we've done this, we're putting it together this fall, and I think this will really be quite an interesting expedition. All right. People will always be our number one asset at the college. And we really work hard to hire the best through equitable and competitive processes. And we continue to invest in bringing in key faculty and staff. And we really find the best there are out there. And once they're here, we really try to support them, encourage their professional development, and give them a pathway to learn and grow. And most importantly, we want to bring them into the culture we have here of innovation and entrepreneurship. We are a college that at every turn really tries to reach out and solve the problems that exist out there. Since May, we have been recruiting and hiring and bringing on board some tremendous new faculty and staff. The efforts of the managers involved, the search committees uh, all across the college, and uh, HR have really done a great job. I've met many in this new group, and they're really a superbly talented group. So we're going to introduce these people today. They've accepted new jobs at the college. There are some familiar faces, but they competed for jobs and went through a search process. So that's why you'll see some of those on the, on the list. So I'm going to ask them to stand and stay standing so you can put a face with a name here. All right, so let's go uh, through the group here. Uh, first is, uh, and some of these I'm not sure if they can make it, Aaron Grace from Financial Aid. Okay. All right, so stay standing. Now, could we, if we could get through the list and then we'll applaud everybody, okay? See if I get you to follow directions for once. Okay. Maximo Enrique from Facilities. Kaylee Tarda from Trio. Okay, she's over here. Anthony Fugoni from Facilities. Okay. All right, keeping them working, huh, Brian? All right, uh, Nancy Fields, Student Information Center. All right, uh, Dan Nunes from Facilities. Okay, uh, Sharon Carroll, Student Engagement. Okay, back here. Camille Brown, Admissions. Tracy Joyce, Library Services. Okay, and uh, we have Francois Dakota from Media Production. He's in the back here. We've got Wendy Valentine in early childhood. Okay, here she is. Uh, Ali Rabi in science. It's over here. Uh, Suthi Gapo, STEM Starter Academy. Okay, all right. There she is, yep. Kathleen Brooks in computer science. Uh, Pavrita Gerdeharn in psychology. Uh, Sharon Hamel in nursing. Sharon Hamel, I'll get that right. Okay. Lisa Lobel in science. She's over here. Uh, Susan Miller in nursing. Okay. Samuel uh, Seifa in mathematics. 
All right, one more, and Elizabeth Stone in dental hygiene. Okay, thank you. Let me try one more time here. Oh, there we go. All right. It's back alive. Okay, good. <clears throat> so, last year was a difficult year for all of us at the college. One that should really make everybody stop and reflect and think through the issues. I spent many days and many nights throughout the spring and summer reflecting on who I am and what I am doing as a leader in higher education. During this summer, I reached out to the MCCC and FSA leadership in an effort to begin a dialogue on how we could work better together. We have had two informal lunches now and we have had some very open and very honest dialogue. We have pledged to work together to improve the morale of the college. We also agreed that what discussed at lunch stays at lunch and we will uh, send out communications if we have a joint statement as we did after the first one which just said we're working together. We recognize that this is just a promising start, but there is much work to do. And my pledge is that I will continue to reach out to the union leadership, to the FSA leadership, and to the whole college to find pathways to work together to make this a positive year at the college. So part of what I'm going to do today is talk about what my mission is and my vision for the college. I'm going to tell you a few stories along the way so that you see where I came from and where does this come in who I am. Just after I finished my PhD in economic history, I secured a one semester job, one semester teaching economics at a community college in the Hudson Valley. They actually hired me on the telephone. I think they were just desperate for somebody to teach economics at the last minute. And that was the start of a real new beginning for me. Before the first term was over, I knew that this is where I wanted to be. I knew that I wanted to stay in the community college sector. I was hooked. I had no doubts. I never considered anything else through the ups and downs in my career. I have loved supporting our mission of access and success ever since that first semester. My personal mission is very simple and has not changed. When I stood in front of the class, I would look out and I would want every single one of those students to succeed. And I would do everything I could to get them over the bar and across the line. Now, when I stand on the front steps of the college and greet students, I want every single one of them to have the best chance possible to succeed. From the front desk to the front of the college, my mission has stayed the same and is completely unchanged. It's just about student success for me. The scope and scale has changed, but not the core. For me, it really is something that motivates me every day. And what community colleges do is very special work. And what you do as a group of dedicated education professionals is simply amazing. Now this is going to come in two parts. 
My vision for MCC is about significantly increasing our student success rates. And to do that, we need to make all, sure that all our students feel they belong here. This is the affective side of our work, and it is extremely important. As you well know, you're all experienced professionals, that how we connect with our students and how we empower them is critically important. And we have to do that in so many different ways because we serve such a diverse student body. Our keynote speaker today, Tia Brown McNair, will challenge us in this area and help us to think more clearly about how do we connect with that diverse range of students that we serve. The, under, the MCC community really understands that feeling welcomed, feeling connected, feeling that you belong is a key to student success. We have been working very hard over the last few years on improving our new student onboarding process. And we believe that we have now a very innovative effective and sustainable model. This new approach uses a combination of online tools, but also interdisciplinary FYE courses that give students a very intimate and small group connection. We think that building this positive environment right from the start and getting our students off to a successful start will carry through throughout their time at MCC. And I want to thank all who have worked very hard to put this together and develop and participated in this new version of Smart Start. The feedback from the students has been positive and we will continue to assess this as we improve. Now I'm gonna go back to when I taught and just as all of the instructors in this, in this room, all of the professors, I worked very hard at my craft. And my department chair, George Stevens, who you might remember as my inauguration speaker, uh, was a wonderful mentor who challenged me in ways that made me a better teacher, but also a more engaged education professional. But there were some things and some problems that my work in the classroom could not solve for my students or not overcome their difficulties. And that led me to seek out additional resources at the college where I could get help. I started by going over to counseling. The head of counseling and later dean of the college was Carol Stevens, George's wife, and I spent many hours in her office learning about who my students were, what their backgrounds were. It turned out that almost every student I went over to talk about, she knew the student and could help me solve these problems. But it also made me realize that I needed to get better connected to the advisors, to the counselors, to other services like financial aid. I had to learn about all the other resources at the college that could help my students. Doing an excellent job, no matter your role, will always make a huge difference. But systematically working together, we can make an even bigger difference. I believe that student success sends the loudest message and will always be our best marketing and best selling point. Individual stories are in for inspirational and we use those on a regular basis. But at the end of the day, 
What's really important is the success rates across the entire institution, which says, how do we serve all our students? We are doing well compared to other community colleges in Massachusetts. We're in the top three in every category of student success. Now, looking at a recent book by uh, Terry O'Banion, many of you know uh, him as you know, a, a longtime community college icon, and the chapters in this book are written by people across community colleges, prominent leaders in our system across the country. It's an, a book that Provost Sisson uh, uh, lent me to have a look at. And there are 13 key issues they talk about in here. At MCC, we're engaged in 11 of those. The other two we have no control over. They're really system level things that we can't do. But it shows that we're on track, that we are focusing on what are the key issues going on today. If we are, though, going to significantly increase our student success rates, we have to move and move into the top tier nationwide. We have to work better together. Over the last few years, we've been putting in place a lot of the building blocks. The teams have worked very hard across the colleges. Faculty, staff have really worked together to put in place things like academic pathways, multiple measures testing, a complete overhaul of our developmental education programs, mobile technologies, uh, more seamless mass transfer, a really student-centered uh, schedule, assessment of student learning, Smart Start, data analytics, and the Navigate iPass system. All of these have been put in place to help our students succeed. This is really helping our students, and we've increased our support for critical areas. But if we are to systematically improve our student success rates, we will need to work more together and connect all these pieces in a seamless fabric of student success. We have many, many bright spots across this college. People are doing some truly wonderful things. But how do we pull these into a systematic support system for our students is going to key, be key to doing a big increase. At the end of the day, substantially increasing our student success rates will be our most effective message when we go out to our communities and can talk about really significantly improving our success rates, this will be a key for those people, those parents, those students who are desperately seeking value and excellence, something we have in abundance at this college. So I'm going to tell another story here. I think many of you had a professor who changed your life, right? And certainly when I go out in the community, I hear stories about how the professors and the professional staff at this college have changed lives. One of those for me was Professor Stuart Bruget, who was the Alan Nevins Professor of Economic History at Columbia University and had served as president of the Economic History Association in the U.S. This is a man I met at the end of his career. Near the end of his career, he had a very deep knowledge of his field, and I loved his lectures. I also liked him because while he was at Johns Hopkins, he told me all about he played in a jazz band, and he was a sax player, and he was from that terrible, horrible city of Baltimore. So. Um, I volunteered at one point to help him organize his reserve reading list. How many of you remember standing in line at the library, right? Anybody? And you had to wait for an hour to get a book or an article that you only could read for an hour and had to turn back in before you got another one and it got back in the line. So we had spent a lot of time waiting and it really uh, took a while, so I helped him. In return, he wrote a letter of recommendation for me that really helped me get into the London School of Economics where I did my master's degree. 
Pro Professor Bruchet wrote several books about early industrialization and a lot about the textile industry. So when I came to Lowell, all that evidence was out there and still there. It was very interesting for me. And one of the things he told me about was defending his dissertation, which is about technology in the textile industry. And he talked about how he had to explain to his committee the difference between the warp threads and the weft threads. And this is what he talked about. So the warp threads, right, those are the vertical, the fixed threads in a power loom. Those are the strongest threads. The weft threads are the ones that are woven by the shuttlecock in between and connect the weft threads. At this college, our strength, our core, is the professional faculty and staff. And I'm going to use this analogy that they are really represented by the warp threads that are in place. Weaving the fabric of success is about connecting the warp, the strength we have, and the weft. The weft is really the connections, the systems, the processes that we create. We have to build these relationships, not individually, but systematically. We have to build the procedures and use the technologies and systems that are out there to link us all together so that we are all connected in how we do recruiting, enrollment, advising, tutoring, and teaching. All of this to support student success. How we connect people from across the college in a seamless web of systematic connections is critically important. How do we build those connections so that there are no gaps, no holes in this fabric? How do we systematically weave that fabric of student success so that no one slips out, no one is missed? and that all get the help that they need to succeed. At many hospitals, they have built similar systems to improve patient outcomes. At Lowell General Hospital, they talk about connected care. And that is they intentionally built a system that connects all their critical and wonderful team members. And this has made a systematic difference in patient outcomes at their hospitals. Colleges that have significantly improved their student success rates have built these connections. We can build connections, connected systems at MCC to uh, promote student success. Becoming the place where more students succeed than anywhere else is something that will show up in our metrics, but it'll also speak loudly about who we are as a top tier community college. I believe we can only do that by working together and being very intentional about this process. We need to use all the tools that are out there, and we've been putting many of these tools in place but now we need to learn how to use them and how to get better connected. Building a reputation for student success across our communities so that everyone, regardless of their background or challenges, can succeed at MCC. This is a project worth pursuing. Projects connected to our strategic priorities are all focused on building these connections. So first of all, where do our strategic priorities come from? When the cabinet sits down, the starting point is our strategic plan, transformative education that was in place now uh, coming up on the fifth year. That has been our guide, our main point. But what else have we used? Well, the MCC Board of Trustees sets goals and priorities for us. And we have the BHE, the Board of Higher Ed, performance metrics that we have to answer to each year. And the BHE uh, goal this year is to close the equity gaps. So we have built our priorities around these four. 
And what we've come up with is what we're calling the six pillars of success at MCC. The first one is about promoting access. How do we do more to reach out, recruit, how do we market the value proposition we have at community colleges in general and at Middlesex in particular? We've been using our federal grant funds and we're now implementing uh, customer relations management software that will really help our recruiting and admissions efforts. This will help us connect right from the start with students and track them all the way through the program. We also need to get into more high schools and connect more with families that, and this will be a critical part of our efforts. We're also, as I've talked about, working on increasing student success. Tools like the Navigate iPass system and also programs like the SOTL 100 More project are critical because these are the innovative approaches that are doing all the right things to help our students succeed. We're also gonna be working on eliminating those gaps in equity. We've already started looking at the data and talking about where do we need to dive in? Which groups do we need to focus on? And this will be a concerted effort for the fall. We're also, um, let's see. Okay. One more, please, Peter. There we go. Supporting an innovation uh, and success here. Innovation excellence is always going to be one of our core values. Something we'll do as much as we can. We will continue to support professional development and innovative projects to the best of our ability. New ideas will always be welcome and we hope that uh, this is something we tell every single new faculty and staff member that their ideas are welcome. We're gonna be careful about fostering our economic sustainability. This is really making sure we track our benchmarks, our key objectives, watch both our costs and our revenue, and that we work more closely with strategic planning. We're working on aligning our strategic planning and our budgeting process so we put our money where the college has deemed critical. We will also be making sure that we continue with things like the business process review to become more efficient and more effective so that we can have more resources to put in our frontline mission. And we're also going to be working with our employers to improve uh, the skills that we give our students so that they're ready to succeed in the workforce. We already have a $4 million grant uh, with uh, Northeastern from the NSF to help our biotech students transfer. And this is something that has become a very big selling point to the biotech industry out there. Very recognized program because we are producing the workforce that they need. So if we are to move into that top tier, if we aspire to higher levels of success, we're really going to have to focus on increasing student learning, really make sure we can have a greater number of students either earning certificates, completing a degree, or transferring and completing, again, tracking those all the way through. Programs that lead to employment, and improved earnings are critical to the work we do at this college. And high levels of success for minority and low income students. Again, focusing on the goal that all our students succeed. So, how can we better connect? How can we work better together? How can we really build that seamless fabric of student success. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So every time I stand up here, I want to make sure you know that I have tremendous thanks for all the great work that you do. 
I go out in the community every day and I tell people that it's wonderful to lead an institution where people give everything they have for their students and help their students succeed. It is overwhelming the response I get in the community about the work you do and I want to thank you for what you do every day. You are the strength that holds the place together. You are the people who have dedicated your lives and careers to this institution and to our students. Let's work together to systematically build connections and weave that fabric of student success. Thank you.